Hey guys, welcome to TechnoLearn. In this video, we are going to be looking at curves and curve parameters and curve properties, understanding a little bit more about them because this understanding, I feel, gets uh, gets missed by a lot of people and there's a lot of confusion around sort of surrounding curves and how they are made in Grasshopper and how we can understand them more to do more complex setting out and actually create more interesting geometry and architecture with them. So uh, let's jump straight in and I just have this curve that I've just drawn in Rhino. I just used the, uh, the NURBS curve here and we're going to reference this into Grasshopper. So the first tool that we're looking at um, or that we'll use is the length. We're going to measure the absolute length of this curve. So I can see there's 346.7 millimeters. Uh, so this is the from the start to the end, the absolute length. And we're also going to measure now the domain of the curve. The start of the curve we would imagine to be zero. And the end of the curve we would imagine is 346. So exactly, uh, you know, halfway through, through 346 would be the midpoint. However, when we use this curve domain tool, um, which is in curve and the analysis dropdown, when we analyze the domain of this surface, what we actually have got is 0 to 579. This is the, the domain of the curve, which is really confusing. You'd be right to be confused about this and why, why is the domain of this different to the absolute length of the curve? In order to just explain this, I'm just going to draw another curve, but I'm going to draw a polyline, just so straight, straight lines between uh, the control points of my original curve lines. And I'm going to do the exact same analysis here. I'm going to clear the values. I'm going to right click, uh, set one curve. I'm going to set this polyline instead. And so what you see is the polyline of the absolute length is 579. And the curve domain is 0 to 579. This would make sense. Um, and what it's actually is, is doing, it's matching the domain of the, uh, of the curved line as well, five, 0 to 579. So what this is really telling us is, is that the way that Rhino draws curves, it's, uh, it's based on or where these control points are. And the algorithm and the mathematics that goes into drawing this curve is all based on the, the relative distances of where the control points lie. And this is what defines the curve domain. So what happens and what's really confusing, clear values from my polyline, and we're going to clear values from my curve. I'm going to re we're going to do this again. But what I'm going to do is that I'm just going to mess with this curve a little bit. So I'm just going to pull, say, one side out here, one side out here. So we, so we, n we now have a different curve, but that it's been skewed from the original curve. So now I'm going to reference this uh, set one curve. I have um, the, the absolute length is now 489, and, but the curve domain is still 0 to 579. It's still the original curve domain. You know, if I take the control points and I do my polyline again uh, to all these control points uh, and right click and set this one curve again, the curve length is 1,261, 1, and obviously the domain of the curve is 0 to 1,261. So now these don't match because I kind of screwed it. So for all of these reasons, working with absolute curves like this can be a bit of a problem or a bit of a nightmare because we, you know, we don't know how, where that curve was created. And basically, we need to rebuild the geometry quite a lot so we understand the domain, the, the boundary the curves are actually drawn in. So the way around working with absolute curves like this is to use a process called reparameterization or normalization. I'm going to delete all these because I don't need them. Um, and we're going to take our original curve. We are putting it through a, a, a evaluate curve. So we're, we, we're, we're understanding or we're plotting a point based on a parameter along this curve. So we'll have our, so our curve length was um, 489. And so what we're doing is we, I have a slider here um, and we're plotting a point along this, um, you know, that, that's, so it's, it's based on the parameter of the curve, we are, we are plotting a curve. And, and this will, is not the absolute length of the curve, this is based on the domain of the curve. So once I go over whatever the domain was, I also should not have deleted my curve, uh, curve domain. So my curve domain 
is actually uh, zero to 579. Once, my, once this number, once this point that we're plotting on this curve goes over the domain, so we're going all the way from zero is the start, we're going all the way up to um, the end, 579. As soon as we go over this, we get an error. And the error is the parameter is outside of the curve domain which makes sense. There is no curve domain in this that is 784, for instance. When we're working with curves, we have a process, it's called reparameterization. So what we're going to do is we're going to right click on um, this curve and we're going to reparameterize the curve. And you can see now immediately that our curve domain is now set from zero to one. Grasshopper understands our curve from between zero to one. This doesn't matter if, so if I copy and paste this curve and uh, let's scale it and we can you know, screw around with it. Now I can reset new curve into this. It doesn't, you know, this curve domain is always going to be the same. It's going to be zero to one. It doesn't matter if this curve is one millimeter or one mile long. It makes no difference uh, because we are reparameterizing. And what that means is our input now, we can understand our curve to be between zero and one all, at all times. So the start of the curve is zero, the end of the curve is one. Again, doesn't matter on the length of the curve. We can switch this over to our other curve. The end of the curve is one, the start of the curve is zero. And halfway through that curve is, you know, a dead center, 0 0.5 is going to be the middle. What this does is it gives us superpowers because we can understand any curve like this. And when we extend this logic to surfaces, this is how we can do really, really complex setting outs of geometry using Grasshopper, very complex parametric setting out. And I'll show you just how to do that because if we, we're, we're now going to take a number system. So when I'm developing all my Grasshopper scripts, the logic of how I build things is very, is very straightforward. We, we build simpler objects, create more complex objects. And we start, and this really starts with numbers. Numbers create points, points create curves, curves create surfaces, and we have this very linear approach to how we create information and they all feed back into each other. So we're going to create a number system now of using this range. So range is using a domain which is set as, it's already set as, but I'll put one in, 0 to 1. Uh, so the domain of this range is 0 to 1 and we're dividing that domain basically into how many steps that we want. So we want one step, so it's going to give us two numbers, 0 and 1. And if we use these two numbers as our evaluate, we're going to plot the start of the curve and the end of the curve. If we increase our domain to say two, uh, you know, we have two jumps within our domain, we have the number zero, 0, 0.5, and one. And now we're plotting the start, the, uh, the end, and the midpoint. And we can increase this, you know, it's pretty, fairly straightforward. We're, all we're doing is setting a series of, a range of numbers that are spread equally between zero and one, and we're using the evaluate curve to plot those points on top of this curve. If this curve was not reparameterized, they would all, all of the, our points will be right at the start because the curve is not understood between zero and one. It's still understood between zero and 575. So by reparameterizing, this gives us this ability to understand any length curve between zero and one and, and plot points uh, within that. We can go a step further. Again, this is numbers create, uh, creating geometry. So we're going to say plot a circle. Uh, so we're going to take all these points. We're going to plot a circle on top of all of these uh, points. So I'm just going to I'm just going to unpreview my point. I can see my circles here, and they all have the same radius. So we could put a uh, let's put a slider in here. They've all got they've all got the same radius. So by understanding our number systems and understanding that our, our curve parameters, we could take our range. We're going to throw this through a graph mapper. So this is just the graph mapper is uh, essentially plotting our, uh, the, our zero to one numbers along the bottom and projecting them onto this curve. But zero to one is a really, really small domain. We could, we could use this as our radius. As you can see, it's doing something. But we, have, but we want to increase this. We want to be able to play with that domain so we have control over the upper and lower boundaries. So zero to one is a great domain to set things out with, but we need to increase and change it to a different scale. So we can use remap numbers. So we're gonna take all these values in between zero and one, and we're gonna remap them to be between say five and 200. And we'll add this into here. And we get this kind of weird setting out. It's mainly because these numbers are too big. So we're, let's uh, set a more, interesting um, 
domain. I'm just going to grab a slider and I'm going to construct a domain between zero and uh, zero and whatever. So we'll actually put it down quite small and then we'll go from here. So now we can control these numbers and control this setting out just with this graph mapper. And all this is is you know our understanding of numbers being mapped between zero and one. Understanding, you know, we can map these as parameters to our curve to set the, where these points are actually out. We can draw a circle on these and we can mess around with the radius with our graph mapper. And so what it gives us is this real interesting ability to create really, really complex objects or really complex setting outs and geometries, but from very, very simple numbers. And if you start getting your head around this, just this kind of workflow. Numbers create points, points create curves, uh, sorry, and curves create surfaces. This will really, really help your scripting get them done. And so by understanding number systems and, and remapping number systems to so always be working in between zero and one, we can do really, really complex setting outs of, of elements um, because we have this ability to reparameterize curves and change their curve domain to be understood between zero and one. This way we can set out our points on the curve and we can apply a circle and you know, use the, that same range of numbers to create a complex setting out of elements. Once you start understanding this workflow and how we use numbers to drive um, points, how we use points to drive curves, how we drive curves to create surfaces, this will really, really speed up your approach to parametric design and how you can create more complex objects and derived from very, very, very simple number systems. So I hope that was helpful. Curve parameters and domains are very misunderstood. Um, and it all comes down to really how the mathematics of these curves are drawn by Rhino. So I hope this was helpful to shed some light onto this. Um, it'll take probably more than just a short video to, to really, really get your head around it. Um, thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. Leave some comments. Let me know if there's anything else you want to know about in Grasshopper. And I will see you on the next video.